Hello and welcome to this edition of Biology Bites. Now today I'm going to be talking about the Alabama rig and how it might actually do more harm than good for the bass world. Now yes, I know I made a video showing you how to make your own and I'm actually working on my own bait called an A3 spinner bait that's sort of an Alabama-ish type of rig. But at the time I was thinking tournaments and recreationalists, people that want to release and take good care of these big bass and make sure that they go back into the lake. But I recently did a, a tournament on Margarita, one of my, my home lake, in February, and I didn't realize how widespread this thing is. I mean, there were people on pontoon boats, four and five people throwing the Alabama rig. There were people on rental boats throwing the Alabama rig. There were people on shore throwing the Alabama rig. Everybody was throwing it. Not just people in tournament, I mean everybody. And this is in winter when usually there's nobody to lake. Now the reason I'm saying it could be very harmful is some of these people just want food for the table. And, you know, they don't care. They don't care if it's a six pound bass, an eight pound bass, 10, 12, 15. That's more meat for the table. And we all know the Alabama rig is not a rocket science type of rig. You just throw it out and slow roll it. You get the right combination of swim baits and stuff on there, and it'll catch you fish, and it'll catch you big fish. And what we've already learned is it does it in the time of year that most of those fish are safe late fall and winter. So you start getting some of these people that want just food for the table, and they start taking out these big brood stock fish, especially in smaller impoundments, that can be very harmful to the bass population. I mean, those are fish that have the genetics to get big. Suddenly they start going onto the dinner table. They're not reproducing. They're not putting those fish that can get that big back in. You might see a decline in not only the size of the bass, but maybe even the population itself. Trust me, over the years, I've seen all kinds of illegal stuff while I'm fishing. I've pe seen people throwing throw nets. I've seen tons of people picking up and looking at trot lines and all that. Because they just want food. And, and our economic times aren't the best. And bass are, in, in fact, largemouth are very expensive fish. I lived in San Francisco for four years, and in all the Asian communities, all the grocery stores had tanks with live largemouth. Most of the restaurants had tanks with live largemouth. So you know, these people find a way to catch them and get a lot of food, they're gonna take them. And they probably won't care if, about limits. I mean, they might, if they can get out with 10 or 15 of them that are this size, they'll take them. Or they might even be selling them illegally to a restaurant or something. You trust me, that, that's where the harm can come from. I don't think there's anything harmful in it in tournaments and recreation or catch and release, snagging them or any kind of stuff. I don't think that's the issue. I think it's the issue that we're putting it now in the hands of eaters and people that want to take anything and everything they catch and cook it up. I mean, I used to feel sick in the stomach looking in the, the trash can next to the flay station seeing two and three pound carcasses. Imagine going up and seeing six, eight, ten, fifteen pound carcasses of bass that people have filleted. It'll turn your stomach. So I'm just saying from a biology standpoint, and I know there's some laws going on in the book, but it could end up being harmful. Uh, we won't know, but we need to jump on it quick because destroying our, our good lakes and our bass populations is definitely something we do not want to do. Until next time.